Engaging Celebrity Interviews Exciting Updates from Christian Filmmakers Movie Reviews so you can choose your movies wisely And so much more here on Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Faith on Film. Holly, how are you doing today? Doing great and excited about the show today. Yes, uh, something that makes it very exciting, of course, is the once a month we get to talk a little bit to our good friend, Melissa Anschutz. And our sponsor, which we're very proud of. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, here we go, Melissa. Welcome back to Faith on Film. Hi, thank you. It's so good to be back. I feel like it's been forever, even though I know it's only been a month, but I've missed both of you. Um, oh, thank which- you. We always enjoy having you on because there's exciting new things to talk about, right? Yes, yes. So many great things happening um, on Encourage TV. We're so excited. Again, we're so grateful to be your sponsors. We just, we love your show. So we love supporting it in this way and being able to highlight a movie. Um, you know, in this month, we have a very special movie called Just the Two of Us that we mm-hmm. want to highlight on the show. Yes, yes. It just released on Encourage TV. Um, it's such a beautiful story. I, I won't spoil anything, but I will tell you it is about three different couples and their journey in love um, and their relationships in love um, and what that looks like at different stages of your life. So uh, they nail it. Uh, they do such a great job. It's emotional. It's funny. It's It's got all the things to create all the feels. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I want to ask what makes it different from other romance comedy you know what what makes it what sets it apart yeah so the the um one couple is actually in the beginning of their journey of love so they're just meeting and they have these quirky moments they're very much uh their personalities are opposite so you know it's he's more analytically brained and she's more of an artist and free-spirited and so um, just their dynamic together. And then the, um, the next couple is kind of in that stage of life where their careers are soaring. And so they're figuring out time to spend with each other and losing a little bit of that relationship sense of being together because it's just not as often, you know, mm-hmm. for them because of career life and life gets busy. Um, and then the last couple is uh, an older couple. They've been together forever, and they're facing a very serious illness, um, which, you know, is is very emotional, of mm-hmm. course, and beautiful, and their love, and how that love brings them through, you know, this diagnosis. Well, I, okay, that go ahead, interests go ahead. me. That sets it apart. <laughs> Uh, not only do you bring us some great movies to talk about, but you oftentimes uh, bring us the the, uh, the star of the movie that you're uh, that you're promoting, and today is no different because uh, you've provided us with uh, Michael Flynn, who's uh, an actor with a, an extensive resume in television, film, and theater. He has played a variety of roles, including a sheriff, a president, a doctor, a lawyer, and a Pharisee. Well, that's that's a big stretch there, isn't it? Uh, he, he also, yeah, he also portrayed uh, Pontius Pilate in The Lamb of God. Uh, and so we're very excited. I can't wait to talk to him today. Uh, he's also, of course, not only the uh, star of this movie, but he's the director and the writer of the, of the movie. So it, it'll be a, it'll be a fun conversation. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at the trailer. Melissa, thank you for being with us today. Do you think that I know who you are down deep? Your hopes, your dreams, your anxieties, your fears? What made you think of that? I was just thinking about us. Love's difficult. Interesting. Impossible. Weird. They say that love can change a person. Love transcends language. Uh, Sort of has a language all of its own. I mean, I know a lot of stuff about her, but do I really know her? Love her. Most of the time. Some of the time. I would not wish any companion in the world but her. see yourself ending up dentistry wait looking in people's mouths all day long i hadn't really thought of it that way before oh okay it's a beautiful mouth thank you i actually had a dream the other night where i'm driving this car of our marriage yeah i know the story and i wondered where i'd go we could drive off into the countryside i want to find some distant corner of the universe and just take it easy question okay i'm thinking have you ever been in love? Um, pretty sure. Yeah. I don't know. You don't know? Or you don't want to say? I have to admit that I 
don't know if I want to keep doing this much longer. I'm not so sure I wanted to hear that. Wow, that's getting kind of heavy for a first date. There's always divorce. That word, when actually spoken out loud, just sort of hangs in the air. It's an ugly word. He said six to nine months with this kind of cancer. You gotta love that word. It could be a lot sooner. Tell me a secret. Okay, I think that dying is easier when compared to living. I'm afraid that I'll get married to someone I don't really love. Why would you want to be married to someone like that anyway? You don't get it, do you? Uh, well, I'm not a happy person, and I don't want people to see it. You're not a happy person? Talk to me. Trust. Honesty. Does that scare you? Of course. It just sounds silly, though. Okay, so we're different. Maybe we could work together. You and I. What do we have to lose? Pretty much everything. What do we have to gain? Pretty much everything. You're great. You're awesome. You think so? I have loved you every day, every hour, every minute, every second ever since. But I still thought I'd have more time. Well, there's always forever. That's it. <laughs> Michael, welcome to Faith on Film. Thank you. Now, we of course are going to talk about this movie uh, that you not only starred in, but you wrote and you directed. Uh, I don't know if it's your first film you've written, uh, but it was a fantastic movie. And we'll be talking more about that. But before that, I just want to know, because I read something on you, and I read that actually your first choice was not into the acting world, but you wanted to be the second basement for the New York Yankees. And then you discovered yeah. that they somehow were not going to come after you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got into this? Um, yeah, yeah. I was a big baseball fan. I grew up on the East Coast. And baseball, especially back then, that was a long time ago, obviously. Look at my face. Um, yeah, I was a big, big baseball fan. Loved it. Played Little League Baseball and all that. Wanted to, uh, Yankees were my team. And uh, I really want... Bobby Richardson was the second baseman for the Yankees, and I thought that's what I want to do. But then I realized when I got into high school that uh, since I couldn't make the high school team, I figured I would never make it with the Yankees. So I tried out for a play and got a small part, and that's what I've been doing ever since. Wow. Yep. That's what I read. Holly, you want to ask him something? I know that you were very interested in finding out about this movie. It seemed to have caught your, uh, your eye a little bit. Well, I mean, I just was going to say, I, you know, writing the three different stages of love story, which basically, you know, you've done as far as meeting and dating and all that. I just found that very interesting. I wish you would have included a fourth one that is older people dating, because it's really hard to date when you're older. <laughs> as I'm yeah. single and I realize that, but given that context, we'll go ahead and go, you know, um, what, what, how did you find this different in writing this to make it different from other romance comedies or other stories about couples? Um, it, it was just, it's kind of the way I work as a writer. I've written uh, several of the screenplays and, and directed them and whatnot. This is the first time that I've actually played a role in a film that I directed. I'm not sure that was a good idea, but anyway, um, I did it anyway. I'm not sure I'd do that again. Um, <laughs> but uh, I just thought, I just come up with these ideas uh, that I want to tell a story about. And I always wanted... I had this, this story in the back of my mind about three different couples at different stages of life and in different places. Um, and as you know, since you, you watched the film, the, uh, they're not connected at all in the film, but then you find out, yeah, they are connected at the end, and so that's kind of fun. But um, I don't know. It just, uh, I just get these ideas in my head and I start writing and it usually takes me a long time. I'm not, I'm not one of these guys who can crank out a screenplay, you know, in three or four days. It usually takes me a year or so, year and a half sometimes. And there was this one film that I wrote and directed that took me about five or six years to finally figure it out. So. Okay. I have a question on, on writing the older love story, which you that you're the actor in that scene. Um, right. Writing it and then 
acting it in doing the role did, did it emotionally hit you different when you're saying the lines that you wrote yeah in a way uh, and part of the problem on that was i was also directing the film and <laughs> and then i look and then sometimes i look at my own performance and i think well if i've been directing myself i would i would have done that differently so, uh, so anyway it was a little tricky but <laughs> but yeah when when i write pardon me <clears throat> am I right because I am an actor I, I try to write stuff that dialogue that feels like I would like to say as an actor and actors you know we look for certain flows and certain rhythms in dialogue that makes it easy uh, for us to say and some dialogue of some of the films I've been in just as an actor you know, the dialogue's kind of clunky and stuff like that. So, so, I, so I try to avoid that in the stuff that I write. You know, you mentioned dialogue there, and I've got to tell you, I think that was one of the things that I enjoyed the most on this was actually the dialogue, because it wasn't an action film. It was a what I call right. a talking film. Um, and the yeah. dialogue was definitely something that I appreciated. I, I loved the conversations that, between all three couples that they would have and um, well, so, I, it, what, uh, what, who has influenced you over the years, uh, as far as the, not only your writing, but your acting? Uh, my high school drama teacher probably has the biggest impact, John Reese, mm -hmm. the high school just outside Washington, D.C., George C. Marshall High School. And, yeah, John has been a great mentor to me over the years, uh, and yeah, I think he was the one, it was because of him really that I got involved in all this. He believed in me at a very early age, and cast me in a lot of uh, plays that we did in high school. And that's where I got the bug. And, and he and I have stayed in touch over the decades. And we're still very good friends. And uh, he's the guy who influenced me the most. And of course, there have been other people, certainly family members, friends, and directors. Uh, and there are actors that I've worked with, you know, all of that is very influential. Uh, but John was the one who really got me going. Okay, and just to have, now you've written it, you directed it, you acted in it, but doing it and seeing it in the finished product, what was your favorite scene? If it wasn't you, even another couple, but what was the one that turned out like, I love how that turned out? Oh, wow, I don't know. Um, I, think, uh, the, I think the favorite scene uh, for Pam and me, Pam played my wife in the film. I think is the uh, the scene on the front porch when she says <laughs> we get talking about uh, winning the lottery and stuff like that. Anyway, I think that was my uh, favorite scene. As I like scenes when I'm uh, just as when I watch movies, I like scenes that are what we call just a wonder, where you kind of lock the camera off, or there's very very little movement in the camera and it's just a couple of actors talking to each other i like scenes like that not only in seeing films that i do but films that, I, that others do so i like that scene i like um I, there, there's a couple scenes from the young couple that crack me up every time i watch them uh and the middle couple the middle-aged couple uh, -huh. uh i like I liked the scene that ended with the reading of the uh, anniversary cards because yeah. they've got this scene going along where they're they're not getting along and there's some pretty honest and rough stuff that they're talking about mm -hmm. and then they pick up the <laughs> anniversary cards that they've written to each other and there's stuff in there that just flies in the face of everything they've been talking about <laughs> and, uh, and I like the way the scene ends um when they say so why do we say things that in anniversary card and talk about love when we can't even say it to each other except maybe flippantly at the end of a phone call yes and then she says well it's easier on a card uh -huh. and i th and i think there's something to that you know we, very much so right yeah. that's real that's yeah. real life that's why i love that yeah, yeah. you're right in. Now, yeah. f following along the same line here that holly just uh, went through with what your favorite scene you're a veteran actor. You've been in so many movies. I, I, I believe I saw it was 191. This movie would be, I guess, 192, 119. This would be 120 films. Uh, what has been your favorite project that you've ever been on? 
Uh, favorite project was actually a film, uh, and I really enjoyed the one we're talking about, just the two of us. Mm -hmm. um, I think my favorite experience with a film uh, is a film that we, I wrote and directed a few years ago. And I, there was just something special about that film. There's something mm -hmm. special about everything. Um, but there was something particularly meaningful to me about it. And, and just the way we went about it, it was, it was a, an odd way of shooting a film. The whole film took place in a cabin in the middle of the winter uh, with six young people. And it was a story that I wanted to tell for a long, long time. And, and I have kind of a different way, perhaps. Nah, I think a lot of people write like this, but usually when I'm doing dialogue, especially if I get into a longer moment for a particular actor, I just take out my phone and I just start talking into my phone. And I do the dialogue that way. Uh, and then after I, if I do that, then you know my phone will print it out for me and then I play around with it, pull it into my the program that I use for screenwriting, final draft. And, and anyway, that's kind of the way I write. I, and that one particular project that we did about five years ago, uh, that one stands out as far as an actor goes. Oh my gosh, there's been uh, so many great experiences. Last summer was kind of fun. I worked with Kevin Costner down in southern Utah on this huge project called Horizon that he's got going. Oh wow! Yeah, that was a blast. You uh, worked on that? Yeah. I'm excited to see that this summer. I'm very excited about this project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the trailers look great. It was at the Cannes Film Festival, and I guess it went over quite well there. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Met a lot of cool people. Now, wait a minute. What uh, role did you play in Horizon so I can look for you? It's, it, it's a supporting role, just one of the guys. You know, it, it, the story is the, you know, the movement was uh, back in the 1800s. Yes. Uh, and... It was just fun, you know, it was, uh, and when you work on a big project like that, uh, they just treat you so well, you had to get yes. great suite in the hotel and all, I mean, and the money's good and it, it's just a great experience. Where did you film that? Where was it, where, where was, where did you go? Location? Uh, it was filmed uh, in, uh, just outside Moab, Utah. Wow. Moab's yeah. a well-known place for adventuring out into the desert stuff like that a lot of uh, old indian ruins and stuff it was a beautiful setting and it's right it's right on the colorado river what a fun project uh, to work on like yeah, you said, yeah. that's memorable and is that going to be in the one or the two are you in both or just no, the 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 one? One. they're going to sh they'll shoot the third one this fall and i'm hoping that they bring back my character you never know yes but hey one and two kevin costner well that's also <laughs> exciting We'll be looking yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's a great guy. A lot of fun to work with. Very good director. Well, and I got an 11-minute standing ovation at Cannes Film Festival, so, you know. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. Right, so, you know, <laughs> can't go wrong with that. Well, this is exciting for you, Michael. It's so good to talk to you about all this and get your perspective. Really enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Michael, what do you yeah. most uh, hope to accomplish through your acting, your writing, your directing, uh, or are you just doing it for fun? Well, I make a living at it, so it's not for fun. Um, uh, yeah, it's you know, it's just part of me. And another thing I do that I that I'm very passionate about that's related mm -hmm. to the industry is I started this thing called the Actors Workshop, and it's uh, I have a studio in Salt Lake City, and I work with actors every month. You're about 10 to 12 actors, sometimes eight, just depends on who jumps in for that particular month. And uh, I've refined it over the years. And it's a very, very popular actors workshop in the Intermountain area. And I get actors from all over the place coming to it. And it's a lot of hard work on their part and on mine, but it's very, uh, very rewarding. And yeah, it's great. It, maybe when we, I'll, uh, just for the heck of it, I'll send you a link to some of the stuff that we do in the Actors Workshop. It doesn't really pertain to what we're doing here today, but you might get a kick out of it. Yeah, we'd like to show it, feature it, and show what you're doing. And okay. uh, for the people to tune into that, that would be great. All right. Yeah. Great. Thank fact, you, how, Michael. 
Okay, I was going to just ask, how can people get a hold of you? Not get a hold of you, but uh, find out more about you, keep up with what so you're follow doing. You, follow you. <laughs> follow you. Um, probably the easiest way is just to find me on Facebook. I mean, it, it, like, there's a bunch of Michael Flims on Facebook, that I'm sure. I don't know. Um, but if you type in, I think, I think if you search the Actors Workshop, I'll probably pop up. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how all that okay. stuff works. Oh, Michael, it's been so good to talk to you and hear about this project. The two of us were looking at, I love that, just the two of us. I'm excited to promote that and have other people see it. And then we'll look for you this summer in Horizon 1 and 2. That's exciting. Oh. There's someone that's in that. That's good. And other films that you've done. But thank well, you so much. you're very much. kind. It's yeah. great to meet both of you. Let's, let's do it again sometime. Let's sure do it thing. again. Sure thing. Let's okay. do it again. Folks, we'll be right back. Hey, I'm Karen Kingsbury, number one New York Times bestselling author and the author of A Thousand Tomorrows. And I'm Tyler Russell, screenwriter of A Thousand Tomorrows. And you are watching, watching Fate on Film. Coming to see Reagan and so excited at the big Cinemark Theater here in Dallas, Texas. It is going to be fun to see what they've done with this movie and of course to cheer for Ronald Reagan. Well, I saw the movie and I love it. Love Reagan, love this movie. Can't tell you a lot about it because lips are sealed till August. But what I can say is we get to show you a trailer and you can get a little bit of the excitement that I felt watching this movie. Pride in a president that I love and wish we still had. And it'll remind you of the wonderful history that we had and how great of a president he was. And it's just a good movie. So let's take a look at the trailer. Welcome to your life. There's nothing a retired governor can do, but a president. Now he can do a thing or two. Everybody wants to rule the world. I will be frank with you that as a citizen, I would not like to see any political party outlawed on the basis of its ideology, because I still believe, Mr. Chairman, that democracy can handle it. I was a brand new KGB officer, given my first intelligence assignment, a certain actor and union leader. Dutch, there's a purpose for your life. You can run from a bully for so long, but after a while, you're going to have to stand up to him. It's my boy! <laughs> There's about to be another war right here in Hollywood. The commies on one side, the mob on the other. And you're right in the middle, son. If you put as much work into your career as you do making your speeches, you'd have an Oscar by now. Hello, I'm Nancy Davis. Hello, Nancy Davis. I'm Ron Reagan. I'm curious, Ron. What would you say is the issue of our time? No question about it. Communism and the Soviet Union. Get in the game. Run for office. <laughs> it's you. I'm running for governor, and I would like your vote. I forgot your name. Do his initials help, or R? Honey, Roy Rogers is here. And he's running for governor. Ronnie, remember when we met? You told me that you wanted to make a difference in this world. You know what you have to do. Governor Reagan again, typically, is against such a proposal. There you go again. But he was not afraid to take us on. There's nothing a retired governor can do about the Soviets. But a president, now he can do a thing or two. Welcome to your life. I was a lifeguard on a river. There's no turning back. And I learned how to read the currents. Not just the ones on the surface, but also the ones deep underneath the water. I am about to start the biggest war of this century, and I'm not going to fire a single shot. You're going to blow up eight years of diplomacy. Well, if you think that got their undies in one, you just wait. What did the president know, and when did he know it? What would you have me do? I want you to fight! Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Okay, Holly, so you said you couldn't tell us a whole lot about the movie, but what can you tell us? Well, at the time we saw that, there was an embargo because they wanted to release the trailer. 
and now they've released the trailer, yes. so now I can talk about it. Uh, and, you know, we all know the story of Reagan, right? I mean, you guys, mm -hmm. we know the story. But what's really amazing about this movie is it pulls you in and reminds you of what an incredible leader he was. It links together how he was so smart about the Russians and the oil and how to how to combat and combat them with not just military, but through his smarts, through his brain. He said, you know, mm -hmm. the oil thing. That, and, he, and he said, I, when I was a lifeguard, I would study how the waters flow and how to save people. And I knew the currents. He goes, that actually helped me in wartime. So it really links together some amazing things. His Christian heritage from his mother, it really pulls mm -hmm. that into it and how he relied on that. Um, I just loved it. Uh, Dennis Quaid, I, you're watching and you think you're watching Reagan. I mean, you I, really do. I, I can't wait for people to see this. And it will remind us of what a great leader we need to have as a president and what a strong leader and what a difference to make. And Isaac, it parallels with today. It parallels with the college riots that Reagan had to uh, confront and interact with with students it, of Russia and the influence of that. I mean, you're sitting there going, well, this is like today. So. God, it took years for Mark Joseph to get this movie made, but God in his infinite wisdom and his infinite timing knew that right now is when we need a story like this and a movie like this. I, I agree with you. Uh, when I saw the, the trailer and he, I mean, it was like if Reagan was actually in the movie, he just yes. did. Dennis just did an amazing job with that. And I got to tell you something. There's a great scene where Pat Boone met when he was a young man met with some other religious leaders with Reagan on his patio by the pool. Well, guess what? Pat Boone is in this movie playing the older guy, and the young guy next to him is playing him as Pat Boone. So it's kind of oh, interesting. Cool. Yeah, it's a very interesting dichotomy. So you'll see him in there. There's other actors that um, you'll be familiar with. But like I said, I've seen this movie now four times, and this is the best version. I saw it early on, and there was a lot of changes that need to be made. And they did make the changes, and it is the best version. And I will tell you, I still cried right. at the very end. And I think it's just that memory of what we had in Ronald Reagan. Um, I wept the day he died, and because it wasn't just losing him, it was losing yeah. our a, a president who valued a freedom and our American heritage. And that's what uh, I just love. Yeah. Well, in the last 20 seconds we have here, when does the movie come out? When can we go see it? It's going to come out in August. And they'll be having a release date. And I'm excited because we'll be actually doing some interviews before that and um, have some more information oh, on it good. to show you, prepare you for it. But this is definitely your older kids, not little ones. They'll be bored by it. But your older kids who need mm -hmm. to learn history are going to love this movie. That's right. All righty. Well, that's it for today, Holly. So glad you got a chance to go see the movie it for the fourth exciting. time. I hope to see it sometime soon. <laughs> God bless everyone. Bye-bye now. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows.